All right, uh, welcome back into the studio. We will be going over your unit four test review. So let's just get it cracking. We're gonna start with cold front. So remember that a cold front is, you know, um, if you were taking a colored test, it would be blue, but it's the triangles, right? And the way, or the alligator teeth, whatever you want to call them, whatever direction they're facing is the direction that it's going. So in this case, this cold front is moving this direction. And remember, the word front means the leading edge of the big air mass. So you have to imagine that this that you see here has a huge air mass behind it. So quite essentially, you know, when we, when we hear fronts and all that other stuff, it's really a mass that's moving in a direction. So this, this mass t is moving this way. And you know that because it shows the front shows you, um, the leading edge of the mass. So if the, so let's just do it like this. Here is your cold mass of air. If it was moving this direction, this would be the front. Make sense? So in this case, for all intents and purposes, we're going to have this be the front of it. And so we will go over a couple little things just to make sure we are all good to go. If here is Dallas, what we can expect is that pretty soon the temperatures will drop. Well, before that happens, uh, you know, it's possible that a thunder uh, storm event could come through. Um, as this front is beginning, the front of this air mass is starting to move through, um, through Dallas. Could be, you know, violent storms, could be possible tornadoes, uh, depending on the type, of, type uh, the time of year and if there's warm air present. Because um, if there is and a cold mass comes through, then yeah, most definitely, you know, that could be a good mixture for possible tornadoes. But as the front is moving through, that's where you could get that, um, the lightning, the violent, you know, um, weather and possible tornadoes. But after the front has moved through, so it looks a little something like this. Now it's a cooler temperatures, cooler, drier temperatures, because that's what cold does. So that's your cold front. So let's talk about, I'm not going to take you through the exact same thing for a warm front, but just to go through it, if this is the half circled warm front, usually in red, we know that pretty soon you have a chance for warmer temperatures and you know, a little bit of rain. So it clouds possibly, um, sometimes it could happen a little bit of rain, but warmer temperatures, humidity, you know, think of those types of things when a warm front moves through. Okay. So there's that. And let's move on to land and sea breeze. So really quickly, here's the deal. So if you have a land breeze, you have, that's what happens uh, during the night. So you have the air coming from the land, going out to sea, warming up and rising. And it kind of just does this convection. It's local area convection. So again, land, land uh, breeze happens at night and, the, and the, um, the air is rushing out to the sea where it warms up and rises. And so you'll, your cloud formation will be happening um, over, uh, over the ocean or the seas during, those, um, during that event. Now let's flip flop to the daytime, which would be a sea breeze. So you're standing facing the ocean, you're feeling the, you're feeling the, the, um, 
the air rushing towards you. You're feeling it rushing towards your face and going out to the land where, as we know, land warms up faster and cools off faster. And so that's what that's the phenomenon that's happening. And so that the air will get warmed up over the land and then will rise up and your cloud formation will be on land in that case. So sea breeze happens during the day, land breeze happens at night. So if you put from the and from it, in front of it, you know which direction that it's moving. Sea breeze is from the sea to the land and land breeze is from the land to the sea. That brings us to warm air over, um, over water. Well, so the reason why this kind of happens is because you're, you're talking about, let's think about Florida and Galveston and those areas. You have warm water and water holds temperature longer. And so those areas have a tendency to not have a great fluctuation in temperature range. Their range stays kind of the same. They're more located, they're more Southern, uh, you know, that's one, of, that's one of the reasons. But the, but the main reason is because coastal cities have water and water holds temperature longer. So that's why those, those temperature fluctuations aren't as drastic as inland areas are. So just understanding that and how, you know, um, how water can hold temperature, hopefully that, um, that helps, helps you uh, understand some of those things. Now let's move on to hurricanes. Hurricanes, you know, we know that warm water fuels hurricanes. Hurricanes are born in the tropic regions of Earth. They're not born, you know, further north or further south uh, from the equator. That's right around those equatorial air areas. The tropic areas is where they are born. Um, and so the warm water is what it needs. It's the fuel what drives the hurricane. And then what directs the hurricanes are the global wind patterns. So the easterlies in this case is what drives hurricanes in the Atlantic Ocean. You never see hurricanes go in the other direction. They're always coming um, towards the United States and um, you know towards those, those islands in the Caribbean because they're born in the, in the big water basin, the big Atlantic Ocean by the, uh, by the equator or, you know, um, near, near the equator. And that's what's kind of happening. So um, some type of air disturbance will happen. And, and, and then that's just kind of how, basically how it's created. And so that's two things you need to know. Number one, warm water is where they're born. And, and so when it gets away from that warm water, that's when it starts losing its fuel and it starts to die. So um, as it comes across and it moves up, um, you know, like into, um, especially once it hits land, like after it, you know, Katrina landed on, you know, in New Orleans, once it runs out of its fuel, it'll start to peter off um, and run out of, run out of its, its fuel. But when it hits the eastern sea seaboard, they don't always just go to Louisiana. I know it feels like that way, but sometimes they go to, you know, New Jersey or um, the Carolinas. And then when it does that, it gets caught up. So you have the you have the band of wind blowing this direction, which directs the the hurricanes towards us. And then we have the westerlies that moves across the United States. So we have the easterlies below it and the westerlies above it. And as that the hurricane comes in, it starts to get caught up in the westerlies and you'll see it start bending the directional movement of that hurricane and it'll go up the eastern seaboard, the seaboard like that. And as it gets to those cooler waters, as it moves away from the equator, it starts to run out of steam and you'll notice that its categories will drop. Um, so that's just kind of your update on hurricanes. And then we have some other things that we need to talk about real quick. Let's talk about uh, convection. So remember that convection is 
you know, so we have the thermal energy from the sun, the earth receives it. And then it begins this whole convection cycle because of a lot of reasons, because of the, um, the, the rotation in, in, uh, of, of earth and, and how it's not um, how the earth is shaped in a, in a circle. We have uneven heating and, and all of this causes uh, convection. And convection is simply as particles get heated up, they get excited and spread out and rise. So heat rises and as it rises and moves away, it gets cool and starts to, those particles tend to start to come back together again, become more dense, and then it starts to fall again. So this is convection. It happens everywhere. It happens in the earth. It happens in our water. It happens in our air. So it happens all over the place, this convection, heat rising, cooling, and going back down again. Now, in the earth, it's super hot. So it, it, no matter where you're at in the mantle, it's hot. It just happens to be hotter, closer to the core. So it's all relevant. Um, it, in, as the, it gets really, really hot, it, the, it'll get even more excited and go up and then, and then start dropping in its hot temperature, but still being super hot. And just kind of, that's how we have that convection in the earth which, as we know, directs our, um, our continental plates. But in this case, um, you know, so we're talking about convection. It happens in the ocean as well. And it starts around the, the equator with the warm ocean currents. They're less salty, less dense, move pretty fast. And it distributes it distributes this water, this warm water all around the globe as it starts to, you know, go to the northern and um, or start going towards the poles. We know that 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 warm um, that warm air will drop or I'm sorry, the the um, the uh, the warm water temperatures will start to sink back down and become more dense and more salty. And that's kind of what happens. Um, and so then it slows down, super salty, super dense, bottom of the ocean, moving very slow. And it's just this real conveyor belt of, um, uh, of water temperature moving all around the globe. Uh, so a couple more little things we need to go over. Review wise, hot spot is, um, hot spots are thinning areas in the mantle. Whereas the plate, as you have your hot spot, the magma will come up, the, um, the plate will move across, and that's how we get the, um, that's how, like the Hawaiian Islands are, that's how, why the Hawaiian Islands are um, created, is because of hot spot, not because of um, boundaries in, um, uh, on, our, on our planet Earth. So chemical reactions, remember, please excuse coughs, burps, sneezes, or chunks. Um, if you remember that, those are the, that's the acronym that's going to help you remember all of the different types of reactions um, for chemicals. Um, so we need to talk about uh, force equals mass times acceleration. Remember that formula. That will, all, that will be very helpful on your test. And so let's talk about L and H as far as uh, weather symbols are concerned. So when we have L, that means low pressure. And remember that that means rainy, cloudy type of um, weather will happen when you're looking at a globe and you're looking at weather maps and you see an L, you know that the areas around that L or, or, or beneath that L are being affected by clouds and rain versus H not meaning hot, but meaning high pressure. So there's no cloud formation. It can happen in the winter. It can happen in the summer. It just means your skies are clear and it's a great time to go on a picnic because there's zero chance of rain when you see high pressure. Remember that density is mass over volume. You're just doing simple uh, multiplication or division there. And the last thing you need to know for this test is that protons help identify atoms. And that's it for unit four, guys. Good luck.